This time last year, I published a video looking at three nutrients which might help degrade spike protein. These were bromelain, NAC, and natokinase, and that video has almost 2 million views. So today I'll update that list and I'm gonna talk about a couple of new options which may come in handy for anyone suffering from spike protein related illnesses. So first up, we're gonna talk about a nutritional element, an essential mineral called lithium. So I was extremely surprised to learn of this and I think you will be too. Dr. Michael Nels is a world leading expert on this and he goes on to explain on his Substack, which I link below in the description, many of the ways in which lithium can counteract the effects of spike protein on the brain. As many of you know, spike protein can trigger inflammation in the brain and this neuroinflammation can go on to lead to a long list of unwanted symptoms. One of the mechanisms it does this is by binding to a receptor called toll-like receptor 4. Dr. Nels describes a vicious cycle whereby long-term chronic inflammation of the brain decreases neurogenesis or regeneration of nerve cells in the hippocampus. This can lead to mental health symptoms along with decreased cognitive function. As demonstrated by this diagram, lithium can essentially step in and block the inflammatory process that's caused by spike protein. The dose recommended by Dr. Nels for people who are injured by spike protein is five milligrams of elemental lithium, which works out to about 110 milligrams of lithium orotate. And whilst lithium has numerous benefits for the central neurological system, it's worth noting that one of those mechanisms is by enhancing the process of autophagy. This is particularly relevant in this context because this leads us on to another paper titled Exploring Autophagy in Treating SARS Spike Protein Related Pathology. For those who don't know, autophagy is the way in which cells essentially recycle dead parts and get rid of what they do not need. A diagram taken from that paper highlights the principle of using autophagy or enhancing autophagy in clearing spike protein. And there's lots of things which can potentially do this. You may recall from this video, I talk about how sauna can support this process, but also aid in the clearance of spike protein via several other different mechanisms. Coming back to that original diagram, you can see how they list natokinase as a direct agent which can degrade spike protein. However, they also talk about improving mitochondrial function as a means of mitigating these effects. These nutrients are listed here, here, and here. You may already know that fasting is one of the best ways to enhance autophagy, and so anyone who this applies to might wanna consider a regular fasting schedule. Like lithium, there are an extremely interesting group of molecules which can also potentially reduce the inflammation of the brain. You might recall me discussing these in another video, which specifically looked at vagal neuromodulation in the context of post-viral fatigue. But overall, plasmalogens are a type of lipid which make up the cell membrane. They are known to become depleted during inflammatory states, and this has specifically been shown during the virus. Ironically, they're also necessary for switching off inflammation in the brain, and this is why it can become problematic if you don't have enough of them. Not only have clinical trials shown excellent results in Alzheimer's disease, but there's also many clinicians who are reporting substantial benefits in the brain health of people who've been damaged by spike protein. The dose is between two to four milligrams per day, but when used in conjunction with another nutrient called phosphatidylcholine, this is how you could maximize the benefits. And following on from the previous video, I want to add that aside from NAC, glutathione, another antioxidant, also has been shown to degrade spike protein. In fact, there have now been numerous compounds which have been shown to either degrade or block the action of spike protein. These phytonutrients include rutin, fisetin, quercetin, and extracts from Prunella vulgaris. In the past year or so, there are more and more companies who've made blends of these products and they're now widely available. And what I can say is just reading through some of the reviews, there seem to be quite a lot of anecdotal testimonials of people who say that they help with this kind of problem. So thanks for tuning in and see you next time.